I'm Michaela Pockner, Managing Editor at Strip Till Farmer. I'm here in Cantrell, Iowa for Zimmerman Manufacturing's Strip Till Field Day. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Martin Till. Well, welcome to the show. Technology Editor Noah Newman here. Thank you very much, Michaela, for that introduction. We'll have more from the field day in just a bit. But first, our top story, tar spot, a fungal disease in corn that could cost you up to 60 bushels per acre, is once again showing up across much of the Corn Belt and even as far south as Georgia. Check out this latest map from the Crop Protection Network. Now, the orange represents positive cases in 11 states, with Indiana having the widest outbreak at last check. Here's what it looks like. The dots are fungal fruiting structures that severely interfere with photosynthesis. Brian and Darren Hefty, fourth generation farmers, agronomists, and hosts of Ag PhD, warned farmers about tar spot earlier this year at the Commodity Classic. So how should you treat it? Here's what they recommend. We like the really early timing, V4 to V6 in the dry areas. But honestly, BSF's been talking about this five feet time to treat thing. Uh, when we start talking about tar spot, that is maybe even on the early side. So we'd tell you probably maybe a week or two before tassel, that'd be when I'd probably spray for tar spot and then spray again about three weeks later. We're seeing a lot of folks that are tank mixing, building their own two or three mode of action product. In some cases, you might be able to do it cheaper, uh, but there are plenty of, of three ways that can be used. The Hefty Brothers compiled this table of corn fungicides for tar spot, comparing each brand name's modes of action and approximate costs. So go ahead and take a screenshot. You've got a lot of choices. All right, the Illinois Corn Precision Conservation Management Program released data from eight years of studies comparing the profitability of various tillage systems in East Central Illinois. Among the key takeaways, no-till is a consistently profitable choice. Not a big surprise to many of you watching right now. The University of Illinois broke it all down during a recent webinar. You can see in the most recent two years, 2022 and 2023, if we look at all those years, uh, no-till has had an advantage over one-pass systems, $48 in 2022, $26 in 2023. The biggest difference was 2018 when we had a $47 bush dollar advantage for, uh, for, uh, for one-pass systems. So... If you're looking at those from year to year to year, they do vary, and there is a, a statistically significant difference by year, but it's kind of hard to tell which year you're going to have before the, uh, the year begins. Schnitke dives deeper into the data during the one-hour webinar. We included a link in the article for this episode on notillfarmer.com if you want to check it out. Well, as we saw in Michaela's intro, Zimmerman hosted a strip-till field day last week at their manufacturing facility in Cantrell, Iowa. Attendees got an up-close look at multiple strip-till rigs in action. And during the event, Michaela caught up with Donaldson, Iowa farmer Mark Dobson, who strip-till soybeans right through cover crops on a certified organic farm. And after switching to a Zimmerman toolbar, he's doubled the acres he can strip-till in a day because he doesn't have to get out of the cab as often, he says. And the benefits don't stop there. I like the strip-till system because of nutrient placement. Um, I know a lot of people, it's about the tillage component. Uh, it's a nice marriage of the two. Um, so I like the, the ability to plant right on top of that, the nutrients, know they're there. Uh, I personally rent some ground sometimes that don't have the nicest soil test, but then I know I can still have a lot of that fertility there for the crop. Uh, another thing I like is um, when you look at it from a soil disturbance standpoint, you're basically talking six to eight inches of the 30 inches you're probably farming is disturbed. So when you look at it from uh, like fungal hyphae and stuff like that, you're not disturbing everything. So even though you are still working part of the ground, you're not disturbing the whole system. So I do controlled traffic on my farm. I'm still in the exact same spot I was since 2011. I don't move out of the same strip. So in, in areas, so we'll call it 22 inches, whatever, I, I haven't worked that or done anything on a completely controlled traffic compaction and everything in those areas. So uh, there's been a lot of push, you know, towards no-till and regenerative and some of that stuff. So a good part of my acres don't see tillage because I'm, I'm following controlled traffic and doing the same thing. Hey, speaking of strip till, the 2024 National Strip Tillage Conference kicks off August 8th in Madison, Wisconsin. There's still time to reserve your spot at striptillconference.com. Use the promo code CAU to get 50 bucks 
off your registration fee. No-till innovator Marion Calmer is going to be there, and he joins us now from Alpha, Illinois, for a quick preview of his presentation. Marion, take it away. My topic this year is, did strip-till solve my nutrient stratification problem? So last fall, uh, we pulled the soil warrior out here and, and put the nutrients in the trench, tilled them in the trench, and um, we're going to look at that and we'll show you the, uh, the soil test data uh, that compares uh, long-term surface applied versus what I call a, a virgin soil or a long-term uh, cover crop scenario. And then last but not least, of course, were we able to incorporate those nutrients and get them a little bit lower with the, uh, the strip till bar? Thank you very much, Marion. Moving on, let's send it over to McCain Vogel now for a look at what's going on in the world of cover crops. McCain? Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. At an upcoming water hemp management plot tour on O'Brien Family Farm in Brooklyn, Wisconsin, I'll be hearing from Rodrigo Worley, weed scientist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, as well as others as they walk us through their weed suppression research. This is a look at the university's cereal rye weed suppression research featured at the 2023 plot tour. I'll have an update on that in the coming weeks. And here is a preview of the 2024 research plots comparing pre and post emergence herbicide programs for water hemp. Check out this video as Rodrigo Worley walks us through an update on what they've learned so far. This was treated about 20 days ago with 32 fluid ounces of Liberty plus three pounds of AMS, 15 GPA. And here's what we're seeing 20 days after. My next treatment here is Enlist. Enlist was sprayed, again, about 20 days ago, 32 fluid ounces of Enlist 1 or 2,4-D choline, 15 GPA, and 3 pounds of AMS. Now I'm going to walk you to one of the treatments where we just mixed the two treatments together because that has been a common question from our growers. Should we be mixing Enlist and 2,4-D? And this is what we're seeing here. So this is a plot where we mixed Enlist 1, which is 2,4-D choline, plus Liberty, which is glufosinate, together. So 32 and 32 fluid ounces of each product, plus 3 pounds of AMS. And here you see the excellent control. And you can catch Rodrigo Worley at the 2024 National Strip Tillage Conference in Madison, Wisconsin on Thursday, August 8th, as he gives a presentation about applying integrated weed management in strip till systems or tune into the next Conservation Ag Update episode to see the results from the 2024 trials. Well, that's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Thanks, McCain. Switching gears, it's once again time to celebrate the hard work of those making today's precision farming systems possible during the second annual Precision Specialist Week. It's coming up August 11th, and Lesseter Media President and Farm Equipment Editor Mike Lesseter shares some perspective on why this week is a pretty big deal. We've been serving uh, farmers for more than 50 years here with our publications. And since we got into the precision farming dealer space many years ago, we've, we've come to, to learn the success stories and the, the, how that precision specialist saved a planting season, a harvest season, was there on call in the middle of the night and really uh, went well and beyond to keep that farmer moving. And um, as, we, as we learned of these, we wanted a chance to celebrate the precision farming specialist, who's really the go-to for, for many farmers at their key point of year. They, they simply couldn't get it done without these guys and gals who uh, move forward, put their own life on hold, and make sure that farmer can keep going. It is sometimes a thankless job, long hours during uh, planting, spraying, and harvest. But uh, this is, an, a, a, is our way of, of recognizing those who are behind the scenes really making agriculture go. And if you want to honor your precision specialists, head to farmequipment.com slash PSWeek. And let's wrap things up with our photos of the week coming to us this week from the Allison Organic Research and Demonstration Farm at Western Illinois University. Lots of interesting stuff going on there. This first photo is Turkish okra. The middle zone was no-tilled into rolled peas. And they had a bad storm back on July 15th, as you can see from this row of corn that's bent over just a few days after that storm rolled through. Here's a look at medium red clover, sweet clover, and Italian ryegrass established by frost seeding into SRW wheat. And here's one last photo from Sumo Oats Harvest, which took place on July 19th. 
The oats were drilled March 2nd and then frost seeded the following day with red clover at a rate of 10 pounds per acre. And they used a herd broadcast seeder to frost seed those cover crops. All right, that'll do it for this week. Email me your story ideas at innewman at lessermedia.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. <music>